So, you know, again, being the content, it's free advertising. Well, this is the other side of the coin. Well, let me um, give you a bit of context um, from this side of the, the, uh, the coin. In that being the content means you actually are going to be the interviewee. So rather than actually providing the content and actually soliciting the magazines and providing them content, they actually come into you saying, hey, I want to interview you on this particular space. We're writing an article about how um, cars are causing all the back pain for Australians and I want to speak to somebody about a physio's opinion on back pain. I'm writing a report for a trade journal about management and the issue they're having with compliance these days and the new government laws and stuff like that. They need an expert to actually comment on that sort of stuff. So it's about them coming to you and positioning you as an expert. So rather than being an author, you are the industry commentator. So the best thing is it's free advertising. You're not paying to actually get in this space. They're coming to you and you're being spoken about in free advertising. It's not interruptive. Again, one of the things I was saying earlier about AdWords and how it's so successful and why it's so successful is because it's non-interruptive. People are actually actively there looking for that information. Same goes for the media. If someone buys a magazine, they're buying it for the articles, not the actual advertisements. If they're looking and watching today, tonight, they're watching it for the actual segments. I don't know why they watch it for the segments, but they do. And they actually are there, they're not watching it for the ads. So it's non-interruptive. You actually are giving them, or you're being positioned right in front of them where they want you to be. They're actually where the eyeballs are. And again, it's that halo effect that keeps coming up because you're not an advertiser. Traditionally, when someone sees an advertisement in a magazine, they turn off or they put their filter on. They'll read the advertisement but with their filter going, you know, they're saying this sort of stuff, I don't know if it's true, they're trying to pitch me, they're trying to sell, they're trying to make me open my wallet. If you're featured in an article about that sort of stuff, it's a lot different because they're a lot more relaxed in that state. Their actual mind and their mentality is different when they're reading an article from reading advertising. So the way to actually get this exposure as being the content is by using, doing press releases, actually getting your name out there and saying, I'm available for interviews, I'm available to comment, and this is what I want to comment on, and doing press releases. So what I want to go through is actually how press releases work, what's the purpose of a press release, and give you a bit of a template so you actually go home tomorrow and start writing up some templates and some press releases and actually having, giving this a shot and try and get some exposure for your niches and niches. So what is a press release? Basically what a press release is, is it's a sales letter pitching you as the interview. Most people when they think of a press release, they think of, oh, I want to write a press release and get that published word for word. All it is is a sales letter. You're trying to sell the journalist, you're trying to sell the media exec, whoever it might be, to actually consider you as a story. That's all you're trying to do, it's a sales letter. And what you have to do is actually see the end of the story first. One of the things, I speak to a lot of people about who want to do some press release and just help them out and chat about different things. And the, the release they write is about them. Like, you know, I've just been awarded this or, or we do this and we do that. And they expect, you know, the Women's Weekly to write an article about how you do, you sell uh, macrame products. I don't know what it might be. But, you know, readers of Women's Day don't really care about that. It's about, where's the story in it? So when you actually write a press release, what you have to actually do is, as Dave was saying before, take your head, take it out of your head, how was it, what does it go, out of your head, and then into the reader's mind and go, what do they actually want to read? Why would readers of Woman's Day, of Dynamic Small Business, want to read about you? And it's not about you, it's about what you can offer them. What's the story? And then basically what you've got to do when you write that press release is pitch the story. You're, p you're pitching the story of how it's going to relate to their readers. What are their readers going to get? Why is it going to be interesting for their readers? So you've got to see that story in mind first. You've got to basically write, almost write the article yourself. Look at it. Yep, that's the article I want to have written by the journalist. Okay, how do I pitch that? What's in it for their audience? And again, it comes down to the press release's purpose. Is not, you don't want it printed word for word. So many people actually write a press release hoping that it gets printed word for word in the magazine, which is just pointless. Because again, you know, a press release should only be one page long. Preferably double spaced, so it's easy to read. So you don't even literally got half a page of text. If that gets printed in a magazine, is that, that's all the exposure you're really going to get. You want to actually try and get a full page article. That's what we're trying to do here, is get some decent content about you in the media. So you don't want to print printed word for word. It's to get you an interview. It's to sell you as an interviewee. And it all comes down to hooks. What we have to do is work out what's the hook going to be. I keep walking in front of the slides and probably annoying everybody. I'm going to try and stick back here. So what you're going to try and do is work out what the hook is going to be for your press release. And this is the story angle. This is the actual article. This is what's going to make people go juicy and go, ooh, this is interesting. And there's a number of different ways you can find the hooks. 
So I just want to talk about some of these things and actually give you some ideas of how you can actually come up with ideas for stories that are going to work for press releases. First thing is surveying your customers. If you have a database, survey the list. Ask them unique questions and find out what they actually want to know. Something Tim mentioned before, which is a perfect example, is go onto LinkedIn and do polls. Talk about, ask people how many people actually don't like their logo. 76% of people don't like their logos. There's a story for Dynamic Small Business. There's a press release. Talk about why they don't like it, why, how they can do to fix it. You know, you're the, the hook is you know, 76% of people don't like their logos and the press release goes on to talk about you know, this is the reasons they don't and I've got seven tips of things they should ask to start with so don't get in this position in six months' time of hating their logo they paid $800 for. And that's the story, is talking about you know, seven things to think about. Popular blog posts. You know, look around, not only your own blog, but blogs in your particular space that have a lot of comments on them. There's a lot of conversation going on in your particular space about a particular topic. That is the story idea. That's the angle. Work out what your position is on that story and write a press release about it, about that particular angle, about that particular topic that's being spoken about. 